This LOS is Calculate and Compare Cost of Sales, Gross Profit, and Ending Inventory using different inventory valuation methods and using perpetual and periodic inventory systems. Periodic versus Perpetual Inventory Systems Under a periodic inventory system, inventory values and costs of sales are determined at the end of an accounting period. Purchases are recorded in a purchases account. The total of purchases and beginning inventory is the amount of goods available for sale during the period. The ending inventory amount is subtracted from the goods available for sale to arrive at the cost of sales. The quantity of goods in ending inventory is usually obtained or verified through a physical count of the units in inventory. Under a perpetual inventory system, inventory values and costs of sales are continuously updated to reflect purchases and sales. Under either system, the allocation of goods available for sale to cost of sales and ending inventory is the same if the inventory valuation method used is either specific identification or FIFO. This is, generally, this is not generally true for the weighted average cost method. Using the LIFO method, the periodic and perpetual inventory systems will generally result in different allocations to cost of sales and ending inventory. Under either a perpetual or periodic inventory system, the use of the LIFO method will generally result in significantly different allocations to cost of sales and ending inventory compared to other inventory valuation methods. When inventory costs are increasing and inventory unit levels are stable or increasing, using the LIFO method will result in higher cost of sales and lower inventory carrying amounts than using the FIFO method. The higher cost of sales under LIFO will result in lower gross profit, operating income, income before taxes, and higher net income. Income tax expense will be lower under LIFO, causing the company's net operating cash flow to be higher. On the balance sheet, the lower inventory carrying amount will result in lower reported current assets, working capital, and total assets. Analysts must carefully assess the financial statement implications of the choice of inventory valuation method when comparing companies that use the LIFO method compared with companies that use the FIFO method. Okay, going back to the same example that we used in the previous LOS, I just want to compare again the um, uh, cost of goods sold and the gross profit under the two methods. Now remember, in this case, the prices were decreasing on our purchases. So uh, we started purchasing at 110 per kilogram, then 100 per kilogram, then 90 per kilogram. So in this case, our cost of goods sold under the FIFO method was higher than under the LIFO method. Now, if prices were increasing, our cost of goods sold, as the previous slide said, under the LIFO would be higher than the FIFO. So we've got to kind of get that straight. So uh, the text also said that fi the, the company sold 520,000 kilograms at 241 uh, per kilogram. So that would equal 124,800,000. So if I just bring up my calculator here quickly, 124,800,000 minus uh, the cost of goods sold here using FIFO, 50,800,000. We would have a gross profit of 74 million, okay? Using the um, FIFO method, sales minus cost of goods sold gives us our gross profit, okay? And again, prices were decreasing. If I bring the calculator back up and uh, just clear that, so it was 124,800,000 minus the 49,200,000, uh, 49, 49,200,000 equals 75,000, 75,600,000. Okay, just bring that back up to have a look. 75,600,000. So again, that's going to be our gross profit under the FIFO, and that's our gross profit under the LIFO. So when prices were decreasing, the cost of goods sold under the LIFO was less, our gross profit was higher. Uh, under the FIFO, our cost of goods sold was higher, and our gross profit was lower. Okay?
Let's do a quick practice question to check our understanding. In a period of rising prices, when compared to a company that uses weighted average cost for inventory, a company using FIFO will most likely report higher values for its A, return on sales, B, inventory turnover, or C, debt to equity ratio. Okay, this is a good question, and this is typical because it's comparing different methods, but then it's asking kind of what is the uh, impact on certain ratios, such as return on sales or the inventory turnover or the debt to equity. So we have to uh, think our way through it. Okay, so this says that uh, it, the rising prices, so it's comparing FIFO. So this is why I like to draw my little T accounts. I think that the prices are uh, rising, okay? and it's first in first out so i know that this is going to be my cheaper uh, for uh, uh units that are going out for my cost of goods sold so i know my cost of goods sold is going to be less under the different methods and my ending balance is going to be more because that's based on the uh on the uh, uh units that are left behind okay so you can see in periods of rising prices FIFO results in a higher inventory value and a lower cost of goods sold. As I set up, said, set up your little T counts and, and don't try to do everything in your head. Work your way through it. Draw your little diagrams. The higher net income is going to increase return on sales. Okay, So the higher net income is going to increase the return on sales. The higher reported net income also increases retained earnings and therefore results in a lower debt to equity, not a higher one. So that one is wrong. And the combination of higher inventory and lower cost of goods sold decreases inventory turnover, cost of goods sold divided by inventory. So B is wrong, okay? Nice little practice question because you need to relate uh, the different inventory methods to the impact on the different ratios. And that's the key point uh, with regards to this LOS and these types of questions. So here's just a little chart comparing the LIFO to the FIFO when the prices are increasing. And I've got some formulas here. It's not required for this LOS. You're going to see that again uh, later on in a further LOS. But we look at the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flows. So on the income statement, when prices are rising, last in, first out, the cost of goods sold are going to be higher under LIFO than are under FIFO. Okay. So therefore, if my cost of goods sold is higher, obviously then my inventory has to be lower, okay? So if I have higher cost of goods sold, I'm gonna have lower gross profit, I'm gonna have lower earnings before taxes, I'm gonna have lower taxes, which is why my cash flow from operations is gonna be higher under LIFO. And my net income is gonna be lower. As goes my net income, so goes my R. So all my R, like ROA, ROE, et cetera, are gonna be lower under LIFO when prices are rising. Working capital is going to be uh, lower because I have lower inventory, and my retained earnings is gonna be lower because I have lower net income, okay? So if we look at the FIFO, and this is just a little quick preview, how we convert from FIFO to LIFO for, in terms of comparison. Well, if I have a lower cost of goods sold, it's going to be the uh, cost of goods sold under the LIFO method minus the increase in the LIFO reserve. And as I said, let's not worry about that for now. I just put that there as an FYI. So obviously, if, um, uh, you know, comparing the two methods, if my uh, cost of goods sold is higher under my LIFO than my FIFO, then my gross profit is going to be lower. And under my FIFO, my gross profit is going to be higher. Gross profit higher, earnings before tax higher, higher taxes, which is the lower cash flow. If I have lower cost of goods sold, I'm going to have the higher inventory. Okay, so we're going to see this uh, chart more than once. We're seeing it here now, but we're going to see it again later on for a new, uh, another LOS when we're converting between the LIFO and the FIFO. And uh, these are the adjustments that you have to make. If my uh, cost of goods sold, sold is uh, lower, we need to convert it. Okay, and therefore my net income I need to convert. My retained earnings I need to convert and my inventory I need to convert, but that's going to be done um, later on. Finish this LOS with a practice question. Speed is a skill, skill gets rewarded. You've got to crank out a couple of calculations to get this done. So a U.S. pulp brokerage firm prepares its financial statements according to U.S. GAAP, uses a periodic inventory system, and had the following transactions during the year. So they give you the date, they give you the activity, 
and they give you the tons and the price per ton. So in uh, beginning inventory was one ton at 600 per ton. Uh, February, there was a purchase of five tons at 650. May, they sold two tons at 700. August, they purchased three tons at 680. And in November, they sold four tons at 750. So the cost of sales in thousands is closest to A, 3850 using FIFO, B, four, uh, 4080 using LIFO, or C, 5000. 890 using weighted average. So you can see you've got to kind of crank through the three different methods here. Okay, we're going to see that the correct answer for this was A, the cost of sales was 3850 using the FIFO. So what's happening here, we have to calculate the cost of goods sold. So we can see we sold two tons here and we sold four tons there. So that's the first thing. We sold six tons and we need to calculate the cost of goods sold, okay? So using, uh, again, sometimes I would set up the T accounts. Below we have a table, but just if I want to relate this to my T accounts to show you, here I have my units, and here I would do my dollars, okay? So I had an opening balance of one ton times 600, so I had 600. Then I purchased five tons times 650, and I purchased then three tons times 680, okay? So uh, that gave me uh, nine tons, okay? You can see here, I'm gonna just speed it up uh, with, I'm not gonna bring up my calculator, but I had nine tons, and uh, if I do the multiplication, five times 650 is 3250, and I have three times 680 is 2040, okay? So my cost of goods available for sale was 5890, okay? So using the weighted average, 5890 divided by nine, uh, that's gonna give me 654.44. Multiply that by the six tons that I sold, as I mentioned, and you're gonna get 3926. So the weighted average one is wrong, okay? Now, as I said, using the FIFO, I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down so I can see it's going to be the 1 times 600 plus the 5 times 650, and I'm going to get my 38. Uh, so 1 times 600 is 600. 5 times 650, 3250. I'm going to get my 3850. Aha, I know A is right. So if I was answering the question in that order, I'm going to be in good shape, okay? Now for my LIFO, as I said, just to finish this off, last in, first out, I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. And I know I sold my six tons. So I'm going to do six times 380 is 2040. And then I've got a, uh, sorry, my three times 680, 2040. And my other three are coming from this purchase, three times 650, 1950. So my cost of sales was the 3990. And that's not matching up with the correct answer. So again, down here is a table. Some folks like tables. I like the T accounts. I set it up in terms of my units and my dollar values. For last in, first out, I work from my bottom, work my way up. First in, first out, I start from my top and I work my way down. Weighted average, I've got to sum it all up and to get my, um, um, uh, my unit cost, okay? Uh, so not too difficult a question. It's very mechanical. It's fairly straightforward. It just takes a little bit of practice. Some people like tables. That's the way you learn it at college. I like the T accounts, um, different strokes for different folks. Good luck with that. That's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.